and you know nobody can argue with that, Raymond, can they? Uh, yeah, probably will be a success, but really, uh, uh, I don't like to poo-poo these things after it's been a great final and that. But I think the past weeks kind of kind of summed up uh, just how much a waste the EIHL is sometimes with the good product and that they've got. I mean, the radio thing that came into play just the week before the playoff finals, and then we had the tele coverage confirmed just a couple of days beforehand. I mean, how are you supposed to market these things? It, it, it's, it's as if the EIHL is this brand new organisation, and this playoff finals we can completely ambush them the week before. It's they get 12 months notice to sort all this stuff out and try to market it. So I think we're factoring that and it's, I think it's pretty poor, to be honest. And the thing about the rules as well, certainly I read the articles on the website right before I left for Nottingham. There was no indication that the overtime rules for the final would be any different. And it kind of struck again of just making it up as they go. And I think you just you need to have it clarified in June, July, before you even drop a puck. It's it's the same with the playoff scenes as well. It's got to be on the website, decided and agreed beforehand. Otherwise, it, it just comes off as making it up, and I thought it did. It came across like that. Yeah. What is it with the, the Elite League and spelling clan things? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they can't get Zykowski's name right in the back of his jersey. They can't spell Brayhead right. I mean, they've only got 10 teams at the moment. You think it wouldn't be hard for them to be able to spell teams. I mean, sometimes, I don't know if it's a kind of Scottish thing with me, but you just feel as if they kind of look down on you a wee bit, if down in their ivory towers down south. Um, it's well, according to, Seth, according to Seth Bennett, this weekend's the pinnacle of English ice hockey. That, that's what I mean. You just... They, it, I think the whole thing, and we'll, we'll maybe not, well, I don't want to talk about it in this programme, the whole thing that came out over the weekend about the conferences and how Dundee, there was, was rumours about them and Fife not being happy about the, the travelling and all, blah, 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 blah. Um, it just seems as if there's kind of like, you know, I kind of look down your nose as if, but you're just bottom feeders, you're just here to make the numbers up. They can't continue like that, it just can't go on, because, you know, do they really want to go back down to Liga 6? Let's face it, because... People won't hang about if they feel as if they've been treated badly. And I'm not saying Dundee and Fife and Edinburgh or whoever else has been treated badly, but sometimes you just wonder, you know, you can't... I talk about, you know, we can't cap, salary cap as such, so we need to look for other ways about it. I don't want to go into it in this, in this programme, though. So, you know, just talking about the spell, and they can't get it right. As you say, Raymond, they spo- seem to spoil everything. I've got to say... I found it ironic you had to pay £10 to watch a semi-final, but you could watch the final for free. I did use the radio because I went to see my football team St Murn on Saturday, but I was listening to the games on the radio while I was there in one ear, which was good. I know, and, it, and it is a good thing, and but it's a good thing as long as it's a compliment to something else. Um, by all accounts, from what I'm led to believe, Graham, I think you got... Did you get the webcast? I did, yes. I got, both, no I got both semis. Uh, no issues. I had a, I've had some uh, Wi-Fi problems of my own. So whilst part of me was think was ready to jump on any particular issues that they had, fair play. The webcasts were were, were okay. I had a couple of minor issues which were of my own making because I need to change broadband supplier. But overall, they, they yeah they did fine. I, I objected to the ten pound each. I thought that was a bit much, as you say, especially given that yeah. But, it's, but, but, we, but we know, but the but the playoffs is all about money. I mean, they'll do away with the stage and the mascot dance off and all that sort of stuff, which was, which was uh, an extremely entertaining part of, albeit small part of the weekend. But you know, to hell with that. They'll, they'll put in some premium price seats. So it's all we know. It's all about generating money. And in fair and in fairness, you know, it does get divvied up. We are told um, amongst the, all the teams in the league. So. Yeah, but the whole webcast, I mean, we don't need to get into it just now. We've talked about it before, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. But the the whole media coverage thing about the league this year, as we know, has been an absolute shambles, and it needs to be sorted for next year. So we'll, we can have a two-hour special on that at some point during the summer, but hopefully they get their act together, because this, this season's been a bit of a joke. And Stephen, one of the main things, we're going to talk about some of the things that came out of the fan forum, but for me... One of the main things was the rosters for next year. 14 imports, no EU specification, obviously. No to do with Brexit and stuff. So you can have 14 North American imports. You've got five Brits um, and three British players born in 1994 or later, making up 22 players. And that's going to be a bench limit. It's going to be a maximum. Which I think, you know, what's your thoughts? I think it's a relatively good thing. What do you think, Stephen? 
I'm not too sure about this young player thing because I think some younger players would be better served playing at a lower games. level instead of sitting on a bench in the jail doing nothing, getting skills. Well, uh, surely the, the, the thing with Jordan Boyes as he is, well, you, I'm just using him as an example, he is going back and forward from Solway and playing got, and it has been demoted, got young player of the year as well uh, yeah. down there. So is that, not, he, is that not a good thing he can train with the, the big club and go down to Solway and get games? Yeah, yeah, I mean it is, but is is every other team got to do that though, or would they just sit there and go like? Well, if it's five, they'll just sit them on a line. Exactly. And still play them. <laughs> you know that's yeah, that's because five want to develop their youngsters and never give them a game. Yeah, d- different different teams have different circumstances, you know, and it's, it's the teams like five are low to give their the younger guys some some ice time, and even we've seen it this season at Brayhead as well. You've just seen Boyd sitting on the bench doing nothing, so. Yeah. You know, we can't just point the finger at Fife here. It's it's a strange one. I don't know. I don't know if that's for the benefit of most players, though. Um, apart from that, you know, it's no no surprise. People were. I think some people were shocked that the import limit didn't drop, but I didn't think there was any chance of that happening. We know the way with with Brits in this league. Obviously, the the top Brits are going to play for the top teams, and the top teams can play can pay them top money. And yeah. teams like uh, like us, Dundee, you know, I know we've got Peacock now, or we had Peacock anyway, but we're, we're not going to like, be able to offer Sheffield, uh, sorry, a player the same as what Sheffield can offer them if they decide they want them. So it's surely, interesting. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but surely it means if you've got the 14 imports, if you're wise and you're recruiting, then you've got a, a chance to unearth some. No, there's that, loads that, of players over North America. That no, that, that that's my point. You know, yeah. like uh, the, the import level wasn't going to drop for that reason. You know, it would just be all the, the top teams would sign up the top Brits and we'd be fighting over the scraps with, with Dundee and Manchester and, and hoping that we can, you know, like get whatever the import level was going to be if the, the, it dropped and get try and compete that way it just yeah. wasn't going to happen so I think there was no surprises with this at all maybe the European player thing was a bit of a, a shock but you know it's not as if our European players this year uh, lit the league on fire or anything like that no no offence to them but you know we'll, we'll see what we can what we look like at the, the beginning of August and take it for there it's interesting though Raymond they say, they say then and, and certainly in the release that I read on the Elite League website, Brits born in 1994 or later for next year. Well, that includes uh, Jordan Boyes and Zach Sullivan. Zach Sullivan's 14th of July 1994. So he would qualify, if, if I'm reading it right, as an under-23, and that's who filled two spaces already. Unfortunately for Callum Boyd, he's 1993 and he just missed it. Um, but, but, but what do you think of the, of the rosters for next year? Is it, is it a good thing that they're limiting the bench to 22 players? Oh, I, I think it's pretty pointless to be honest. Um, the the sort of analogy I always give is you build a house from the foundation up, not the roof down. And this is kind of what the EHL are doing. They're trying to set it from the roof down. And unless you've got the junior development system in place and running well, then I don't think it matters. You're, you're kind of shuffling the, the seats on the deck of the Titanic here. Um, there's just not the... There's just not the talent there anymore. I mean, if just to briefly go into the Team GB three years running, they've been the oldest team in the entire World Championships. And if the same squad that we think is going to play in Belfast in the next couple of weeks will be the same, then that'll be the fourth year straight running, average age of 32. So mm-hmm. there's a, a few exceptions aside. There's quite a dearth of talent out there. And uh, like I said, you need the proper feeder system as well on top of the junior development. And then I'm not quite, I'm like you, I'm a wee bit unsure how exactly this rule exactly works because really, if Jordan Buesa trains with a clan, but then say next week he's playing for Solway, well, he technically can't be in the clan roster that night. No. So so I don't know how that works. So it could be even worse where instead of just needing three under 23s, you might need six So because you'll need to rotate them if you want to give them proper game time. So, I, yeah, I think ultimately, relatively pointless. It, it needs, you, need to fix, yeah, you need to fix the junior system first and work your way up from there. Then you can start changing it. Yep. Graham, the five British players we kind of like can cover quite easily. Um, Peacock, Haywood, Mackenzie, Russell... Sullivan, Buesa are all there now, Boyd, you know, the, take your pick. Um, obviously, we don't know what's happening in terms of a head coach and who's coming back and who's not. 
Um, we know some people that aren't coming back. Obviously, we talked about Matt Keith Levitt. What's your thoughts on the roster thing altogether? What, in terms of the changes? Just, yeah. Um, I, I, well, you used the term lip service there. That was my first thought. I thought, you know, the, the, I would say to the fan forum again, you know, this is not a development league. And we kind of get that. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily want the EIHL to be a development league. I get that thought. But you want it to be a realistic goal for, for Brits to go to. Uh, once they're good enough, and and you know, raise right. This the, the way that the whole um, hockey system works out here is just not conducive to bringing through good young Brits into elite league ice hockey. There, it, it's just not built that way. So for me, I think it's the EIHL kind of saying, yeah, okay, fine. At least nobody can give us too much jip about this because look, look at the rule change that we brought in. So don't tell us we're not doing our bit to try and encourage mm-hmm. young Brits into the echelon, the higher echelon of of British ice hockey, but ultimately, you know, this is it's one it's one of the few days where I will kind of jump to the IHL's defence because if it was a development league, then it wouldn't be getting the crowds that it's getting right now, and that's just a sheer that's just a reality which I tend to uh, I tend to agree with. Um, you know, bench sizes and everything else. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I suppose the goalie thing's quite interesting. Somebody was floating the idea about maybe, you know, what, what our, our team's going to go with a young Brit goalie as a backup necessarily because of the, the change in our sizes. I, I, I still don't think that necessarily will change things too much. I think we can still expect um, maybe the top teams maybe to, to try and follow maybe the giant route of having a kind of, you know, two more or less two number one, shall we say, uh, in some form of rotation. I still think that's probably going to be a reality. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll just have to suck it and see and see what happens. But uh, uh, I didn't get overly excited. Reading between the lines, Jennifer, of and I don't know if the Edinburgh were complaining so much, but you kind of get the impression it was Dundee and Fife that are moaning about the travel, the extra travel down to the likes of Milton Keynes, Guildford. If they're if they're having problems with the overheads in terms of that, is running fourteen imports not going to be a complaint for them as well? Quite possibly, but like what I think is quite good about the idea, and nobody's kind of really looked at it in this slant, is effectively you're limiting teams to running three lines. If you want to run a fourth line, you're going to have to be using junior players rather than buying up expensive Brits to top up your line. So I actually quite like how it's a bit inclusive that if, I mean, obviously you look at the, the Dundee versus Cardiff game, Dundee ran out of steam because they didn't have that fourth line, whereas next year, if teams want to run the four lines, it's going to be, have to be junior players that are going to be filling up the spaces rather than overpriced um, older Brits, so I, I, I personally quite like it. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to run it, it just means that if they want to have the full 22 bench, you need to make them up with juniors. But then you look at, it's like, um, sorry, Raymond was saying, you're building it for the top down. You look at Sheffield, who have got a couple of cracking players, and Shudra and Ferrara, who are already playing minutes. Um, they're covered, really, aren't they, <laughs> Raymond? Um, so, um, the thing I was querying, though, when it says uh, five Brits, for example, five over 23 Brits, um, does that mean you can have seven in your squad, but you can only put five on the bench at any one time? Is there a limit Have there? It- I would presume so, because if you're having your 22 players on the bench, three of them would need to be under 23. But is it not any different to having 15 imports and you just put one in the stands every game? I don't know. That's It's not really yeah, very clear. If, you know? Yeah, if, if the big clubs want to carry that overhead, then that's kind of up to them. Do you know what I mean? But I, I doubt that people are going to be packing extra Brits. No, I, I doubt many Brits will want to be going if they're going to be sitting up in the stands. Especially the top ones. Um, obviously, some of the things we're going to cover on the forum, the panel uh, at the weekend was Neil Black, Tom Darnell, uh, Neil Russell and Mike Cowley. Um, but they, they reiterated that goal line technology will be in place for the start of next season. I hope they're right. <laughs> it would be, be the first time they've been wrong, though, would it? Uh, like last year. Yeah, like last year. I, I, I believe it at this time, there, there's such a lack of credibility. Like You're literally with the league, league now. It's, when it happens, I'll believe it's there. That's my attitude now. I mean, I think it was ourselves in Belfast that were holding it up. Not the clubs, I have to say. I think it was the arenas that were, they wanted certain, they were done a certain way. And, and, and I think, you know, we spoke to John Jones, who's the part of the company who, were implementing it and he was saying you know you've had to adapt the way they do things for specific arenas so hopefully that's overcome because it's something I think we'll all 
I mean, a couple of times the clan uh, at home games I can remember 